In this video, we're going to discuss the idea of oxidation state. The term oxidation state refers to the number of electrons lost or gained. If we're talking about a metal, it's going to be losing electrons. If we're talking about a nonmetal, it's going to be gaining electrons. So the number of electrons lost or gained for an element when that element is bonding with another element. So the idea is we're going to be looking at the charge on an element when it's connected with, when it's stuck together with, or when it's bonded with another element. We're going to use this as our oxidation state chart, and this will be handed out to you, and we will use this information. One of the things that I want to show you is something that we are already familiar with even though we haven't used this chart. So first off, in the top corner of the box is the selected oxidation state. So let's take a look at column 1A. All of these elements in column 1A have one electron on the outside. They have one valence electron or one bonding electron. All of these elements are in the alkali earth, excuse me, alkali metal family. The alkaline earth family is column 2A. Column 1A is all the alkali metals. They all have one electron on the outside. So because they are all metals and they have one electron on the outside, they're all going to lose that one electron. So let's take a look at what happens when these elements lose the one electron. Lithium becomes a 1 plus. Sodium becomes a 1 plus. Potassium becomes a 1 plus. Rubidium becomes a 1 plus. Cesium and francium both become a 1 plus. All of these elements are in the same group or the same family or the same column because they act similarly when connecting or bonding with another atom. So all of them with their one outer electron, they all lose the one outer electron, the one negative outer electron, and they all become a one plus ion. Let's look at column 2A. Column 2A, all of these have two outer electrons. So this becomes a two plus. It loses the two, loses the two, loses the two. All the way down this column, this group or this family, they all lose two outer electrons to become a two plus ion. Let's look at column 3A. Column 3A, three plus, three plus, three plus, three plus. All of these become a three plus because in column 3A, they all have three outer electrons, so they become a three plus. Look at column 8A. All of column 8A, because they all have a full outer energy level, it is all zeros here. It does not become a plus or a minus. Let's look at column 7A. Column 7A, it gains one negative electron, so they all become a one minus. Column 6A, they all become a two minus. And column 5A, they become a three minus. Now, here's what becomes interesting. When we look at this middle section, the D sublevel, the fourth energy level for the S's, and then the third energy level for the D's, those orbitals are very close together. So, in some cases, when we look at the pluses of how many electrons are going to be lost, it is going to make sense based off of quantum mechanics, and in some cases it's not. The first thing I want to point out to you is everybody in column 1A a 1 plus, column 2A a 2 plus, and there's only one option. But take a look at titanium. Titanium has three different options of how many electrons it might lose. Vanadium has four different electrons. The reason that there's multiple choices is those principal quantum numbers and orbitals are so close together, 
it's not always going to be set on how many electrons they're going to want to lose. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we can tell why would titanium sometimes be a 2 plus, sometimes be a 3 plus, and sometimes be a 4 plus, whereas everybody in column 1A is a 1 plus. Everyone in 2A is a 2 plus. These A columns are always consistent, and then the D sublevel gets to be a little bit confusing where it has multiple charges that are options. So let's take a look at some quantum mechanics and why we have these options for the oxidation states. Let's take a look at titanium first. I'm going to use the shortcut method for titanium. So if I look at titanium, I'm going to look at argon and then just continue on from argon. It's 4s2. And actually, I apologize. Let's look at uh, scandium first. So scandium 4s2 and then 3d1. When we look at the quantum mechanics, the quantum electrical, the uh, electronic configuration of scandium, argon, 4s2, 3d1, we see that scandium can only be a 3 plus. This makes sense to me because we've got one 4s orbital with an up and a down, the 4s, and then five 3d orbitals and one electron there. So what scandium does is it loses three electrons. Well which three electrons does it lose? It loses this two from the 4s and this one and it gives them away. This metal gives the electrons away and it will give an elect these electrons to a non-metal. But it gives those electrons away so now it has three less electrons. It gives this, those two and that one away. So it empties its 4s and 3d. So on the outside, sorry about that, I just noticed it was off the screen. It loses these two and this one, which are the same as these two and this one. It loses those. So now on the outside, it's emptied its 4s and 3d so that it looks like argon. So we would say Sc with a 3 plus ion is the same on the outside as argon. Sc with a 3 plus ion is the same on the outside. On the outside. Scandium still has 21 protons and argon still has 18 protons but on the outside they look the same. So that makes sense. It would want to lose these three, become a 3 plus. Let's take a look at titanium. When we look at titanium, we have argon, 4s2, 3d2. It's the second one over. So you've got an orbital with an up and a down, and then five orbitals with an up and an up. So if I were to guess, without looking at the oxidation state, if I were to guess, I would say, well, the fourth energy level is the outer energy level, so maybe it just loses these two. Well, maybe this energy level, this principal quantum number, is so close, and all these orbitals are so close, maybe it loses those two also, and it could become a 4 plus. So to me, those are my two options. I can either lose those two and become a 2 plus or lose all four and become a 4 plus. When I look at my options here, 2 plus is an option, 3 plus, 4 plus, and 5 plus. I cannot explain using quantum mechanics where the 3 plus or the 4 plus would come from. I think in the previous I was looking at vanadium, but now I'm looking at titanium. So the 2 plus and the 4 plus make sense. I don't know why it would lose 2 or 3, excuse me, to get the 3 plus. So sometimes the oxidation states are going to match up perfectly and it's going to make sense. Like scandium, a 3 plus, it must lose those 3.
three plus loses those three. Titanium, a two plus, three plus, and a four plus. It makes sense to be a two plus, and it makes sense to be a four plus. I'm not for sure why it would be a three plus. Then we'll do one more looking at the oxidation state. Vanadium is argon, 4s2, 3d5. So now, argon, 4s2, 3d5. If I were guessing, I would guess that a 2 plus would be an option, that it loses the two electrons from the 4s orbital. I would guess that a 7 plus would be an option. Maybe it loses these two and these five. I would guess that maybe it just loses those five and becomes a five plus. Well, when we look at the oxidation state, a two plus is an option. A two plus is an option. A five plus is an option. A seven plus is not an option. So that's not an option. It does not ever lose seven. So a 2 plus, 3 plus, 4 plus, or 5 plus. I do not know why it would be a 3 plus or a 4 plus. That doesn't make sense to me based off of quantum mechanics. But it can lose 3 or 4. I'm just not for sure why it would. So 2 plus and 5 plus make sense, but the other ones do not. But it can occur. So... These are the oxidation states for different elements. These are the charges that the elements can make. And when you're in this D sublevel, it's possible that the element can do different things. Sometimes it can lose two electrons, sometimes three, sometimes four, sometimes five. In many cases, we can explain why those charges would be there based off the quantum mechanics, but not always does that line up. I hope this helps in understanding the oxidation state chart.